Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, we got game, mad game, and luckily <laughs> we also got apps for that. <laughs> Plus, iTunes matches here. Flipboard gets a big update, and the Gmail app is back in the store. All that plus being stuck on Earth ain't so bad on iPad today. iPad Today is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 20% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code iPADtoday11. And by Slingbox, which just turned your iPad into a television. Slingbox introduces their new iPad app, so now you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you take it. Check it out at Best Buy or Slingbox.com. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, visit AudiblePodcast.com slash iPad today. Wow. Wow. That hurt. <laughs> I pulled it right out of your head. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to iPad Today, the show that covers the iPad today. Yes, it does. iOS is a strange and magical place. <laughs> is it really? Sometimes navigating through the App Store can be a full-time job. They've changed how it, that works, by the way. What do you mean? You can swipe it now, just like that. What do you mean? It's complicated, but uh, I'll show you later. Okay. They, they, somebody sent me an email saying, you know, they've made it easier to navigate through the iPad stores. They didn't tell anybody, but they've made it possible you could swipe pages. Well, I, I'm, I'm confused. Were, I, uh, were you not able to do that in the past? Apparently not. Uh, I guess I can't still today, but uh, well, somebody said that. So maybe I shouldn't listen. <laughs> maybe to you should should uh, take a, your advice from. Update. Do you also you know install malware if somebody tells you? Oh yeah, look, you could do that. Could you do that before? Uh, no, you could not. You had to push that little arrow. Remember how hard that oh, was? Oh, well, that is good. That's nice. Yeah. Look okay. That. Thanks for that. That's cool. Hey, look, MadPad is um is featured in the App Store right now. Remember when I showed off MadPad and you laughed and laughed at me because I had no skill at all? What is it? It's th when I made that really bad song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mad it was Pat. a bad song. Well, it's, it's featured now, MadPad. Remix your life. It's for people who have talent. I just, I'm not one of those people. But today, we're not actually talking about MadPad. You don't Pad. need talent today. No. You, well, you, you, you need to have game. You got game? You need to have game. I got like game. Like that Spike Lee movie. Got we got game. We got game, baby. We got game. We're gonna. We do this every few months. Yeah, uh, we do. Because there's always, I think the iPad is an amazing gaming platform. Well, yeah, we could talk about new games every week if we wanted right. to. Uh, that might be overkill, but there are definitely new games coming out all the time. They look better and better. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's one of those one of those um, categories that's uh, worth revisiting regularly. I, you know what I'm looking for? I'm always looking for this, and I haven't found it yet. I'm looking for the next Plants vs. Zombies. I know everybody goes crazy about the fact that... Uh, Angry Birds is like the game of the century, and it's you know, there's Angry Birds action figures, board games, stuffed pillows. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on. Somehow, Angry Birds caught people's imagination. I don't think it's as much fun as Plants vs. Zombies, personally. And I, if I, I'm looking, and if anybody knows, because I still haven't found it, if there is a game that is as good as PVZ, tell me about it. Well, I don't even like PVZ all that much. Oh God! Now, are you more of an Angry Birds person? No. I'm not even... What's okay. your favorite so, game? So uh, we get some idea of what we're talking about here. Well, so I like the physics game. You do? Or you played that stupid dinosaur egg game for It was a very year. good. It was called Arriving HD. Yeah. And I finally stopped because it started to upset me too much. That's the problem that I have with games. But that has nothing to do with the uh, iPad platform. That's just because I don't like losing or being confused by right. games. And sometimes I don't like to take the time to go through it. I like word games. I like I, I play, uh, you know, little puzzles type of things. Words with friends all the time. Love that. Things that are sort of mathy or physics related I usually appeal to me more than like shoot 'em ups Yep. Yep. Me but too. We talked about Machinarium, which is a great game. Yeah, that's a uh, really fun game. Cut the Rope, we've talked about. That's a physics game. That was really fun. I played uh, that for a while. The thing I don't like about Angry Birds is that, have you noticed that any time, the, 
for example, when the Kindle Fire comes out, it's like, well, you know, we you can Angry play Birds. Angry Birds. And yeah. it's like, it's as if everyone in the whole world just wants to play Angry Birds all day. It's, no, it's it, not it's true. Just, it's not really much better of a game than so many of the other games. It just bothers me how it becomes one of these, like, it's in a feature set. So, I th yeah, I think, and I think what you're saying, and I think it's probably true, is that because everybody talks about Angry Birds, everybody assumes that's the best, right. that's the game. And it's not that much fun. In fact, even our chat room agrees. A lot of people in the chat room say that they like Plants vs. Zombies better. Uh, to me, that was the best game. Quell, I'll have to take a look at that. Um, anyway, we've got some that I think are very good. Yeah, we've got, we've got a, very good, compelling, we've very got a good mix of games. Uh, first one is something that has been eagerly awaited by many in the Minecraft community. Finally here. Minecraft, the pocket edition, P. meaning it's made for iPad and iPhone. Yeah. So uh, Chad, who is a big po uh, pocket person, no, he's a big Minecraft person, says that there is a little difference between this and the Minecraft you might be used to on your desktop computer. You cannot mine. You <laughs> think Minecraft, you should be able to mine. The way Minecraft works, and look, take a look at it. It's a three-bit, I'm sorry, eight-bit world, although it should, kind of should, feels like it's three bits, where you walk around. Uh, there are other people on the server-based desktop games. There are even enemies and animals and stuff. And that's your hand, believe it or not. <laughs> that's your hand. It's a very see how clunky everything is. Now, is but that notice, part of the appeal? Is that it looks so yeah, crappy? Yeah, I think that was that. It's it's supposed to look crappy. You might say crappy. Uh, others would say retro. It's an homage. I okay. have to say the point. Right. The touch interface is kind of nice. You would do this with a mouse otherwise. And then you see there's a little quadrant here. That's jump. And that's forward and so forth. And there's some water there. But see, here's the difference on this Minecraft. Let's jump into the water. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's three. It's eight bit water. We want to say three bit. Um, but three <laughs> D eight bit. Normally, what you would do is you would uh, mine. You would dig materials. There are many, many different materials in Minecraft. And then you would collect those materials into your little pouch here and build things. But look, I've got quite a few materials already, don't I? Because Minecraft PE is not about mining. It's about building. And so, in fact, you can choose your material, steps, wall, mushrooms, what, flowers, and build ladders. It's amazing. Things, people have built in Minecraft, the desktop edition, they have built the Twit Brick House. For instance, a couple oh, of people have done that. Oh, I remember seeing that, yeah. actually. So, now, what you build in Pocket Edition, can you then take that back to your desktop ex experience? Uh, or are the two even talking to each other? I don't other? know. I don't think so. The basic, can you, I don't even know if you could save it. Can you save it? You can save it, but you can't. You can save it, but you can't do anything with it. So it's really more for people who are so Minecraft addicted. They're just into it. They just want to have it on every device it's they've got. It's soothing to them. Yeah, exactly. It's soothing. It's just, it's just fun for them. I apologize to any Minecraft fans for saying that it looks crappy. I understand well, that it appeals. Well, that's the look. That's the style. I just wasn't sure if it was as intentional as it is. Or I guess what. I could build a ladder here if I, if I really knew what I was doing. A bridge to nowhere. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's... Uh, I mean, I don't have to show you much... Um, I don't think that Notch did this. I think that they had a third-party developer work on this, and they were working on it for a long time. We've been waiting for it for a long time. It's perhaps the most hotly awaited game on uh, the iPad and iPhone. Six ninety-nine, but it works on both. It's a universal, so you can have it on your iPhone and your iPad. In fact, if you use iCloud, it will automatically install on your iPhone when you install it on your iPad. Now, it's brand new. It went out uh, what, last what, night, midnight, midnight. Yeah. yeah, and then everyone in New Zealand got it first because, of course, they're... They get everything first if you're going by time of day. But it was oh, interesting it to look out. at the reviews. Some people said, this is great. This is exactly what we wanted in a mobile, uh, you know, a mobile version. And right. other people said, no, I want the, the real Minecraft, the whole Minecraft. Well, and so I wouldn't it just depends on the kind of person you I are. Wouldn't expect, not only would I not expect that, I wouldn't expect that additions and, you know, Notch is uh, really making some big changes and additions to mine, the Minecraft world in general. I don't expect those will make it here. This is a pocket edition. Think of it that way. It is just a little bitty Minecraft for you to have when you can't be at your desktop building that world. People have done amazing Make sure you really things. want it because it's seven bucks. Now, yeah. I've got something e either epic or epoch, depending on where in the world you live yeah. or how you like to pronounce things. Um, but this is I, this so is, not my kind of game. This just came out. This is a first-person shooter, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's... Okay, so... So, <laughs> yeah, this is, like, absolutely not my kind of game. But I like the way it looks. I mean, the graphics Beautiful. are really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, like, it's like Wally if everything went wrong. Yeah. Or, or a, like, a almost a Terminator kind of a yeah. thing going on. We'll, we'll go past the Did you play the any? Intro. Did you play it or did you give it to anybody to play? What do you mean? Is that you? 
No, that's the princess that I need to save. Oh, She's it's in Zelda. the cryo tower. It's basically a dystopian Come Zelda. On. Do I? Come on. You can't tell me I can't go past this. No skipping, baby. You must watch the cutscenes. This is really weird. Why can't so you, I pass you know it? what? We don't need to because this gives you a pretty good idea of what it is. Oh, come on. You don't want to see my skills? Yeah, I must I be able like to go past this. Skills. It is interesting to see. I, I have to say, first person shooters to me are not the best uh, style for the iPad because controls are more difficult. Touch lends itself so well to things like Angry Birds, Plants vs. Zombies, physics games, puzzle games. I don't know if it lends itself quite as well to first-person shooters like this, but it sure does look good. People love Infinity Finally, Blade, which is a first-person sword play. game. Jeez. Well, this is the thing. is like, okay, so the princess is up there, and I'm trying to kill everybody. I'm doing pretty good, right? So do you Not stay really, there most actually. of the time? Yeah, I mean, you can move around. So this around. is more like target practice than it is It is, first -person yeah. Shooter. And it actually, I played this for, oh, I don't know. By the way, yes, third-person shooter. 30 minutes or so yourself. this morning, and it's very stressful. But I think if you were trying to just whoop, reload, I think it's, it's for people who are very angry and bitter. Yeah, and they're tired of playing Angry Birds because that's just, just a stupid game for the masses. You want to do to me, different? this Play is just Epoch. this doesn't use the idiom fully. I I just don't go crazy about these, but I know people do. So we're and this is the hot game right now. Well, it looks nice, but it's a little I don't know simple, right? You get sort it's of less interesting than I thought it would be. Do you like pirates? Yes, I do. Take me away from all this death. <laughs> I like pirate games. Now, um, there, there, I have two games. We're going to show. We're going to show primarily one, but I should point out there's a free one called uh, Crimson uh, Steam Pirates, and uh, it's kind of a neat turn-based pirate game. Pirate games have been around for a long time. These are games where. Um, you uh, are commander of a pirate fleet or a pirate <laughs> ship. Is that how pirate games work? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're running the ship. You're running the ship, and, yeah. there, and now this is crimson. And I'll just show you real briefly. In this case, it's turn-based. So, uh, uh, what you do is you chart your course. You will have to uh, learn naval tactics on a pirate ship. You have to broadside people. You have different games, uh, different uh, guns, and so forth. So this one, you pick where you're going to go, and you press play, and it takes a turn, and there'll be bad guys. I, this is your traditional pirate game, but Sid Meier's pirates have come uh, to the iPad, and I think are actually. By the way, that was a bungee game, uh, and this I is was a two K like, game. That's not Sid yeah. Meier's. Yeah, no, it's very nicely done. This is Sid Meier's, and uh, and this one. It's loud. This it one, uh, <laughs> I'm playing as Twit, right, uh, is real-time, which you wouldn't expect. Sid Meier, most of Sid Meier's games are turn-based, like Civilization. This one, you actually sail around, but it's very similar. Uh, a little more cartoony to the style. Um, here I am sailing, and I just... Uh, but it, I think this fits the idiom wow, better. Wow, it must be windy out there today. Oh, yeah, we're sailing along. Yeah, you're just cruising. You you have quests, you have goals, things that you need to do. Is that guy behind you uh, yeah, an enemy? Yeah, that, no, I, uh, I already conquered his ship. Oh, I see. He's a prize. Oh, oh. here comes an English. Now, I'm an Englishman, so I'm not going to attack that English uh, ship, but I am going to sail around. I have a mission, but as I sail around, I may, in fact, see other ships. Uh, see, like that one that I can attack. We, I'll just get a little naval What if you battle. want to be a psychopath and attack some of your own kind? You could. And then what happens? I don't know. You, you, uh, do you, you would jail? get You would get cast aside huh. uh, as a... As a, uh, a, a bad pirate. A bad pirate. A so dread pirate. I think if you're going to play a pirate game, this is one of the best to play. You get a character, you advance. Um, I know pirate people who would just go nuts for something like this. With I, all the and, maps and you get and, to choose and, your and, sword. And, and I have to say that uh, this is really... Uh, by the way, this is the ship I, uh, I captured. This is a really nice implementation on an iPad. Uh, it's a, you know Because really, mostly what you're doing is just touching, moving around like that, right? <laughs> but like the graphics are better on Crimson. Ballet. Crimson uh, may be more... Uh, oh, here we go. Let's, let's get a little battle out. Kind of sailed. Oh, that's you know, the good. ship that you captured is really polluting well, this it's, water. Well, it's burning. I should probably drop it off, shouldn't I? I just, you know, I mean, think about your carbon footprint here, Pirates. Oh, this is a long time ago. There was no carbon in those days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was a little more cartoony, uh, but it's a fun game. And I think kids would like this, too. It's not particularly violent. And you do learn naval tactics. So shall we shoot against him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's my guy. Get him. You, you want to attack him? So. Yeah. 
So this is uh, this is early on. So they're Fire! telling him. So now I have to get. See, he's 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 shooting at me. So I have to get in a in a good position to shoot him. And then we'll fire with some grape shot. Oh, I'm a little too far away. Look at that. You're gonna you're capsizing. Ah, you see, it's harder than it looks. Yeah. Now I can board him, and we'll have a little naval battle. Oh, neat. So it's not just from afar. So look. You can oh have no. A duel. Oh no. Let's have a little battle. Let's have a little fun. Oh yeah. I think that this is uh, a better game for kids. Uh, you look like you're doing just fine. Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> Sid Meier's Pirates. I think that's a quite a good game. The graphics, you're right, are a little thin, a um, little cartoony compared to Crimson, which has really stunning graphics. $4.99. The gameplay is quite good, though, and I think you'd like this. And by the way, yeah, if you played it on the Atari or the Commodore 64 or uh, Apple II, this might look a little familiar to you. It is a classic uh, game from. It's too bad apps there. don't fit inside stockings, because this would be such a nice yeah. little gift yeah. to give somebody as a stocking stuffer. I, think so. I, mean, I yeah. guess you could do gift certificate and then creatively put it inside a stocking. Right. Finally, oh, brains, rah. Zombies. I'm, I'm you helping like zombies? you go to the next topic. Rah, brains, there are a lot of zombie blah. games, starting with Plants vs. Zombies. Blah. This is the best, in my opinion, this is the best zombie game on the iPad, and this one is a lot of fun. It's called Zombie Smash. Now, this is Zombie Smash HD. There's a Zombie Smash for the iPhone that's 99 cents. The iPad game's a little more expensive, three dollars ninety nine cents, and uh, you know I was. You get there's three different uh, kinds of scenarios. Uh, let's go to the Lost Hills. You can play a campaign, but there's endless sieges and stuff. This is kind of similar, I would say, uh, to Plants vs Zombies in some ways. The zombies uh, continue on, and you have a variety of weapons. Um, in fact. These are shooting basics. Let's continue on. Because what's going to happen is the zombies... Yeah, 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 yeah. Come in. Here come the zombies. Yes, yes. At this... Oh, too bad, because this is a level I can't flick the zombies. You know what? I want to go back almost, because um, in this one, I have to shoot at zombies, which isn't as much fun. Wait, let me see if I can go back. Let's exit out of this. Just aim for the head. Well... Is anything I know about zombies... Aim for the head. Yeah. You're right. Gotta and get them in the head. This game has so get many right fun up. things like that. Let me go to... Uh, let's do a sandbox, because that's... That's a little bit more fun. The sandbox gives you all of the different weapons, uh, and you can do all the different things. And the thing I like about this, uh, we'll bring on some uh, some zombies here. Okay, you can flick them. Look at that. You just throw them in the air, and they. And they <laughs> What? what the heck? Yeah. But they'll yeah. just get back up. Well, some of them get back up, but sometimes they die and little stars come out of them. Oh, because they've been um, flicked hard They enough? come from different locations. Yeah, I have to get a they lot more of them. They come from far and wide. Zombie smash. Let's get a lot more of them. So the idea is to violently kill zombies. Yeah, and you have so lots of different... You have chainsaws. You have blades. Oh, they're getting in the house. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But it, kinda just, it still kind of has that cutesy feel. Yeah. Now, this is the, sand, so this is the sandbox version. Um, so that you can do a lot of different things. And the truth is, if we go back there, the campaign is probably more of a way to play. Um, I think this is actually a really good uh, game for uh, zombies uh, and zombie hunting. There's Easter mode. I don't know you that say is. that so seriously. Yeah. You know, like this is a skill that you need, and I think that if you are going in to be zombie the hunting, zombie apocalypse, zombie smash might be the game for in you. In the zombie apocalypse, you really do uh, want this game uh, to, to practicing. Be careful. So play here. Why do they never think that we can just get started? You always have to go through all well, the Well, I'm still early tutorial. enough. Now, so we have special slots. Stuff falls from the sky that you can collect and put in the special slots, slots like bricks. So see, they, they actually come uh, pretty, oh, pretty. Yeah. yeah. You you might what you might end up doing is, is like it, this. It's a two finger type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I got Easter Bunny zombies. Now, are there. you just inside the house? Yes. And if they get in, should we let them get in? Yeah, let's get them. In. Yeah, because they're gonna they're gonna they start said, chewing away at the house. Oh. And that's not good, of course. Zombie smash. So this is the zombies smashing. Yeah, once they get they in, smash back. You can see I. They're I've, so stupid. It's like why don't you just go through the door? You dumb right. zombies. They're just gonna knock on the windows for a while. I agree. I mean, they're so silly. dumb. Play the. I, I've seen. Uh, I've seen the uh, younger kids play the uh, sandbox mode for hours on end because you get so many fun ways to kill zombies. Um, it this can be very fun. challenging. I think it's a fun game. I like doing yeah. this for some reason. See those stars? You want to collect those as you kill the zombies. And so it does actually get quite busy and difficult quite fast. But I think when... And, oh, see, I lost because they got it. So I think, though, that... And this is what I'm looking for in an iPad game, a game that uses the medium 
uh, in this case, touch well. And, and that's my problem with the shooter games, or even Infinity Blade, where it's not really natural. You have to have controls on the screen or something. This is natural. You're flicking zombies, just right. like boogers. You just go boop, boop, boop. And it just fits. Yeah, with, with Epic slash Epoch, however you want to pronounce it, I was just sort of... Yeah, I, I, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not as crazy about it. Yeah. Yeah. So Zombie I, Smash, I think, is really great. Well worth 3 dollars There's strategy, really great too. Game. You just, you know, you have to have a reasonable blood pressure level or it might make you go nuts. Right. Flicking the zombies If you don't that. like uh, something that's relentless and gets more and more hairy, then you will not like this. <laughs> you will not. But it's, that's how zombie worlds are. Right. And I think that's why people like Angry Birds is because you could sit and look at it for a while. And yeah. Like, and think about, ooh, Boing. what's my positioning? This Boing. is like fly or die. Yeah. Flick or die. Flick or die. For all the links to the apps that we mentioned, you can always visit us at twit.tv slash IPT. All of our episodes have show notes. So everything we talk about on the show will have a nice handy link. Look at that. If you want to find out more about it online. That's sweet. Isn't that great? Yeah, we do that just for you. We're just nice people that way. All of our uh, our uh, videos are embedded on each episode page. But if you can't watch us nice live, hats. that is a really nice screenshot from last week. <laughs> wow. We are attractive people. <laughs> Those like, are two extremely attractive we people. Like ho the homeless people out there with their 40s. We, we look like we need to be <laughs> confined to some sort of yeah. safe house. Oh. I think Jeff Stewart is sabotaging me. He's doing that. Look course. at that. There's no question. That is that. not. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, you can watch that hey, episode. Baby, pucker up. It was a very good you episode. Want a kiss. And if you want to watch us live, please do because we, we, we watch your chats coming in in real time and you help us figure I'm out stuff. It right now. Yeah, I'm watching it too. Yeah. Uh, we record the show 1.30 uh, p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays. That's 4.30 Eastern. Join us if you can, but if you can't, you can always visit us. We're on demand. Download the show from iTunes. All, all of our audio and video feeds are right on our episode pages at, at twit.tv slash IPT. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to watch or even listen later on whenever you have the chance. iPad at twit.tv is how you can email us. And thanks again for every, uh, every support you show us each and every week. Each and every year. You know who has supported us greatly uh, through the years, and we really do appreciate it, is the folks at Squarespace.com. The secret I'll behind say. exceptional websites. If you're an iPad or iPhone user, you'll love Squarespace because they have that great iPhone app that lets you post to your site, moderate comments on your site, get great stats. But I could just go on and on. I mean, this is an amazing company. It's web hosting plus software. But, you know, state of the art in both sides. There are a lot of web hosts who have, you know, site builder programs that are terrible. They make terrible sites. You can never do anything with them. That's not Squarespace. Squarespace, state of the art, virtual server technology, so you never, ever run out of bandwidth. And add on top of that just fantastic software. Look at this. If you've got an existing blog, you can t import from WordPress, TypePad, Movable Typer, Blogger APIs. So you, And import and export so you're never stuck. They have that philosophy like Google of you can always get your data out. And, it, and when it does the import, it remaps the URLs, gets all the images, all the comments even come along. So here's what I suggest. Go to squarespace.com. Click that big green button on the front page. It says try it free. You don't need a credit card. Uh, just uh, the name of your site, password, and an email address. For two weeks, you get the full run of the place. Anything you want to do, all those great templates, the plug and play, simple to use integration with social media, the form builder. Uh, and look at these sites. These are examples of, of Squarespace sites. Every Squarespace site is unique, mm -hmm. is beautiful. It, not just for blogs, photographers use it for their portfolios. A lot of businesses use Squarespace as well. In fact, this is there's a oh, dog walking uh, uh, place. That's so, so cute. Yeah, and that cute wagging tail. So it, this, here's something you could do. If you have a friend who has got a small business uh, or a small business you like and they don't have a website, create a website for them with Squarespace. Very, it's easy to do. It'll take you 15 minutes, especially our audience. And then give them the keys in effect. Say, so here's the site, here's the password. That's actually a really nice gift. Isn't it? And it's yeah. free, You get, but you got them started. Right. And then don't forget to tell them to use the offer code iPADTODAY11 when they sign up because they'll get 20% off for the first six months. So it's a great gift. You, could, you don't have to tell them that you know this is an ad. You could just say, hey, I have arranged a special deal for you. I created a site for you. Here's this site. You needed a site and I just whipped one up. Here's the login and the password. You got to play with it for two weeks but if you decide you want to buy it, sign up and don't forget to use iPad Today 11 uh, when you sign up because you had 20% off for the first six months. It's like a great gift. Yeah, that's a really, that's, a a, great gift. that's an awesome deal. Yeah. I think a lot of people just don't start uh, sites, uh, you know, with any blog engine because they just think, oh, it's going to be really hard to get going. Yeah. So if you get going for somebody else and then like you said, give them the keys 
it's very easy to update. Look at Web92 in our chat room. It says, I love Squarespace. Switched from WordPress because of you guys. Woohoo! Check it out. 507PROJEX.com. See, we I will. mean, this, this is great. And by the way, you can do this in the... You know, on Twit, you know, normally when we, we talk about sites on Twit, we say we get there first because we're going to bring it down because anytime we mention a site, everybody watching goes there and it brings these sites down. Not Square. I've yet to bring a Squarespace site down. We've tried. We have tried. Uh, it's just incredible. Squarespace.com slash. No, no, not slash anything. Just go there and then use iPad Today 11. Snake Eyes. Wait, 11. Because this month is the uh, Yeah, it's the 11th month of oh, the year. He did this all by himself. I love it. He's got Vimeo Good in there. Stuff. Got, it's great. And I bet you, not that you're not a talented person, oh, look, he's got but music. it wasn't he's got hard to put together stuff. at all. He's embedded his SoundCloud stuff. Isn't Neato. that great? Yeah. See, this is, this is exactly what's so cool about Squarespace. A site like that, you could do In it. In fact, I want to see more of these. If you have a Squarespace blog, send us an email and show it off. And the next time we have a Squarespace ad, we'll have a great I example from one of our fans. I think that's a great, from I now on, too. let's do that. That's what we're going to do. Thank you, Squarespace. So we've got, uh, quite, it's been a busy week in the world of iPads. Um, not only was there a iPad competitor that's not really a competitor that uh, that launched oh, on Tuesday. Well, it didn't launch on Tuesday. That's when I saw it for the first time, was on I Tuesday. Turn on the, I did not expect to like the fire at all. And by the way, that's a Marware case I've got on that. Yeah, it it's nice. But, it's uh, like a wallet. And you know, I'm an iPad fanatic. And of course, it doesn't have the range or depth of iPad apps. Um, it's not, you know, for 200 bucks, don't think of it as an iPad killer or an iPad at all. But it is easily the best Android tablet I've ever used. I've got Evernote on there, a calendar, email. Plant, you want to see Plants vs. Zombies on the, uh, on the Kindle Fire? I suppose. Oh, say yes. Come on. Well, I mean, I'm kind of like, whatever. You, you know, I, fire. I at first was not as impressed with this, but as I have used it, uh, I've I've become more and more impressed with it. And I think it, it's actually no, that's Zombie Smash, right? Not Plants vs Zombies. No, this is my favorite of all time oh. games. They have very similar um, well, little they do logos. Uh, they do. Yeah. Um, in fact, and, in fact, like should I plug one. in the audio? We can actually listen to the uh, game and everything. I mean, I know you're all iPad users, but. Uh, and it's I, nice and to I know what else is out there. If you're though. in the market for an iPad, there, there's nothing to beat the iPad. This is seven inches, and one of the things I like about it, I do think seven inches is a is an interesting form factor. You can type like this with your thumbs. That's true. Um, and That's it's true. easy to put in your pocket. I, I just think that there's a lot to be said. For, you see how much smaller it is. It's ha literally half. You really half overestimate how big pockets are. Like there's no pocket I own that that could fit in. Always oh, fits in my pocket. Well, you have small pockets. You're a small person. That's right. I it depends pockets, on the kind of pockets. I'm a big person. You're, you're, if you're rocking the big pockets, then the Kindle Fire. Some people complain <laughs> that it isn't very fast. Um, I've I've found it to be perfectly adequate to the tasks. Um, and of course, it's a book reader, and you can watch Netflix on it, uh, which we like. Um, mm -hmm. It's got uh, apps, not all the apps that are on Android, but all the apps that uh, Amazon, uh, most of the apps that Amazon offers. Also, if you're into Amazon Instant, that's something you can't do on the iPad. I do. I have to say, if I go to video, I can see the, these are the, uh, because I'm a Prime member, these are all the things I can watch just free. Just click them and start them. You know me, Hugh Grant. You made the same joke yesterday. <laughs> I was listening. It's, people... Don't watch the show, both shows. <laughs> Julia Roberts, Hugh Grant, any movie with them, and it's good with me, right? So watch. We're watching. It's actually not the worst movie in the world. No, it's honest. romantic. It's, it's cute. Good. The guy eats the mayonnaise and yeah. thinks it's bad yogurt. It's so funny. Yeah. He gets real sick. Yeah, okay. Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she great? She yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You're just jealous. It's true. I am. I'm jealous of her fame, her lips. She does have good her lips. twins. They're weird. She has yeah. twins? She has twins, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about Julia Roberts anymore. That's the fire. I think that Leo, as strange as he is, would agree with me in, in s small, <laughs> quick moments of clarity <laughs> that the, the Kindle Fire, is a, it's, a neat, uh, it's a neat little device. It's not an iPad killer. I don't think it's supposed to be. It's, I think it's much cheaper than an iPad, and I think it reflects that. It's at least more limited. Yeah. Um, there are fewer apps at this point. 
Uh, but but I think sufficient apps. Yeah, but it's almost more of like it's got like the niche thing going on. It's if you a, want the Amazon ecosystem at your fingertips, exactly. that's it, that's what it wants to be. There, you know what? There's nothing you can do on the uh, Kindle Fire that you cannot do on the iPad, except for that Amazon Prime. That was the one thing. Yeah. Because it uses Flash. Right. Uh, it plays some. It does play Flash, but so you know if you have an iPad, you certainly shouldn't say, "Oh, I've got Kindle Envy." Uh, or fire envy, but on the other no. hand, if there's somebody who doesn't want to spend 500 bucks or more on an iPad, this might be a good choice for them. I like it. I, I do was too. surprised. I didn't expect to like it. Uh, I'm glad that you like it because you paid for it, and I wouldn't I want did. you to have it. buyer's remorse. I had buyer's remorse uh, before it came. I thought, oh, how can I cancel this? You know what's uh, kind of cool? One what's of our that? favorite apps, Flipboard, got a pretty big update today. And at oh. first, I thought, oh, has Flipboard finally come to the iPhone? Because they've been promising that forever. Yeah. It hasn't yet, no. but they've. When you when you when you update Flipboard and then launch it for the first time, you get this nice kind of like blog from the Flipboard team saying, in. Um, as we ramp up to our iPhone launch, we've added some new functionality. And oh, so they are mentioning the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the three major things that they've added are, number one, multi-account support. So if we're in a household mm -hmm. and we all have Flipboard. You wanted this. The way, yeah, the way that we want it set up, you, you have your tiles arranged a certain way, you subscribe to certain feeds. I can have an account, and when you log in, you can have a whole different account. That's awesome for people who share iPads. Right. Very, very helpful right. because the fl Flipboard, is very, it's very sp specific the way that you well you have it it's set also up. useful for me because I have two different Twitter accounts one for posting links and one is my personal account it would be nice to have access to both of those so yes. I, that that also will do that I presume um, and then they've added 500 px that's right as well as tumblr, tumblr. Uh, so these uh, LinkedIn uh, well I, no, LinkedIn was already there. I just haven't actually hooked it up because I never use LinkedIn. Right. But if I wanted to hook up, and my 500px account is pretty bare because I showed that off a couple of weeks ago, but it's fairly new as an iPad app. Um, but my Tumblr, I look through all the time. And yes, I like my Tumblr dashboard just fine. It's, you know, the, at Tumblr.com when I'm logged in. There's nothing wrong with it. But I sometimes want to be inside Flipboard for a lot of things. That's where I want to read my Facebook updates. We'll look at my friend's Instagram posts. Look at my Flickr feed. Uh, read some of my RSS feeds. Um, you know, read about tech. Tumblr, it just, it just makes it easier for me to stay inside Flipboard. Some people don't like the Flipboard interface because they say, oh, it just makes it too sort of magazine-y and I just want... Uh, something that's, you know, if I'm reading a feed, I just want the stories and right. I want to arrange it a little bit differently. But um, this is my number 100% love consumption device. Yay. It's my favorite and it just got better. So thanks, Flipboard. You're the best. Also, uh, something that uh, was in the App Store but then was pulled from the App Store and is now back in the App Store is the Gmail app. Yeah, I guess they said it was buggy first time around. Yeah, there was some sort of permissions issue right. that was just causing it to crash pretty much any time anyone loaded it up. <laughs> the Gmail team, uh, they they uh, it, it launched in the App Store, oh, I don't know, I think it was uh, November 2nd, a couple weeks ago. And things did not go well, and people were pretty upset about it, and they got a lot of bad reviews. And uh, the team took to Google Plus to explain, listen, we've got an issue, we're pulling it, uh, with no word on when it would be back, and it's back. And so, are, have you played the, with it? I mean, is it uh, well, see, is the, it worth replacing the Apple built-in uh, email app with it? I don't think so. Okay. But I also like Apple Mail. Uh, Me too. It, and it, frankly, Gmail's web interface is, is pretty good on the iPad. Yeah. So I, I mean, never felt the need for this. Exactly. I, yeah. I I I I've never had a problem with uh, porting all of my Gmail and Google Apps accounts, which are that's uh, that's all I have actually now. That at least I'm checking regularly through uh, the Apple Mail interface in iOS, right. but gmail.com works fine too. I don't know, it, it, there are certain things that, um, that the app uh, provides. Well, something that it doesn't provide that's sort of weird is um, uh, labels. Like oh. you can't apply labels to things within the that's app. That's kind of key. Wait, well, it's sort of, it, I think that um, some of the, the, the annoyance of people is if you're going to have an app, you that is a choice besides of the what I have on the website, yes, then why wouldn't you. it not be more special? I mean, what is the yeah. incentive to have the app? Some people just like apps, though. You know, they don't want to go through Safari. So if you're somebody who wants to check out the Gmail app, it is back in the App Store, and it is not crashing uh, every five seconds the way it, it was two weeks I ago. I just installed it. it I, I think it, you're right. It's not crashing. Good. Um, How does it look? Yeah. 
you know, it does. It's what's funny is it doesn't particularly look like Gmail. No, um, it looks like Apple Mail actually. Yeah, uh, we can have Reply All Move label, so it does have labels. It seems almost like a in hybrid respect. between the yeah. web version and the way that Apple would have you. It feels like check the your. Web. It feels like the web version, really. Yeah. 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 Huh. Hmm. There huh. you go. Huh. Of course, it's free. You know, I'm a little disappointed because uh, I couldn't get a mini pocket rocket, but I'm glad to see that now they're back in stock. Wow. Yeah. Is that what I think it is? It's a little tiny motorcycle about this big. Oh. I want to ride it around the studio. Oh, I thought you were talking about something else. <laughs> I'm so glad that was going to be awkward. But yay. yay. It's my lucky day. Also, just a, just a little plug for anybody who's an Anthony Bourdain fan. I am. Are you? I love Anthony Bourdain. He's the chef that yells at people. Well, he's not really a chef. He's the guy who did no reservations. Oh, no reservations. He I travels love around and he's, an, he's tries not a new cooker, food. he's an eater. Yeah, although he has written books about cooking. Right. And he's a, you know, food critic. There's a pocket rocket, by the way. Let's see. Only 200 bucks and it's about this he's tiny. You know, it's funny there's something else called a pocket rocket, but There is? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's not that. I love oh, that. That's a very cute little bike. Isn't it cute? I'll ride it around the studio. You'll love it. Great. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would love that, especially during TNT. You know, I'm trying to digest I something. I know how you enjoy it when I make you know, noise. Some sort of studio. Congress decision about the free internet. Just Here's ride that pocket rocket around. It'll be great. It's, Bring the shark with you. It's funny. Yeah. It's a hoot. It's, it's good stuff. <laughs> but no, so Anthony Bourdain is awesome. And right now, they've got iTunes has sort of a featured Anthony Bourdain collection, uh, which is worth mentioning if you're. Uh, into his stuff. So this is actually his collection. So he's got a new show. Uh, it's called The Layover. It hasn't actually launched yet, but you can, you know, get a sneak peek so of what The Layover a, is this like. This isn't an app. It's a TV no, show. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is... It's, he's, a, he's a TV he's a, show it's host. A it's a TV show. I but understand. he also has uh, books that you can right, buy. Right. I just feel like since this is all stuff that you can consume on your iPad, every once in a while I like to give you an idea of something that you would like to consume that's not enough. I agree. I now, none of this stuff is free because, of course, you're, you know, you're paying for TV or you're paying for books. Do they have, when you, they say collection, they, you buy them individually? Because, you know, they were doing like they did the complete Led Zeppelin, the complete Bob Dylan. iTunes used to do big collections of artists where you'd get everything they ever recorded. I don't... Wouldn't it be great to buy everything Anthony Bourdain ever did? I don't One low flat rate. Yeah, I would, yeah, it would be you great. You would do that. I don't think that the App Store, well, I don't think that iTunes in general ever lumps seasons together. Not for TV. You can no. do a season pass, but you can't no. do a series pass. Right. Unless maybe the show has been over for a certain amount of time and then right. they have some sort of a deal with the, with the studio. The Bourdain Bundle. The Bourdain Bundle. See? Love that idea. You're welcome, iTunes. We would like royalties, please. <laughs> is no reservations available on iTunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, all the... the I seasons. missed a lot of those. I love that show. You know, that's that's one of the shows that I'll find, you know, I, I'm going to Barcelona after Paris, right? The things you love the most, food and travel. That's right. It's the perfect thing. He's kind of got a little attitude. Does and he I'm have a go. Barcelona one with he paella? Does. I haven't seen it yet, but someone said, you got to watch the Bourdain mm -hmm. where he goes the to Barcelona. Paella. It's true. I, I had a pink soup at the Ritz in the Barcelona that was amazing. Well, you know, you're a bit of a high roller. I don't know if I'm going to have pink soup at the Ritz when I'm there. I might just be in expensive. a little basement bar and having a good time. pink soup. Doing some flamenco. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Also, so this is just, okay. I, it, like I said, it, iOS world has been weird and wondrous uh, this past week. And something I noticed, do you ever, when you're updating all of your apps, you go through all of the updates and figure out, well, okay, what's changed? Yeah. What can I expect? Because when you have 40 updates at a time, it's you'll a never notice right. unless you read the fine print and figure out what's changed. Um, I did notice when I was reading uh, how the Yelp app was getting updated. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to point this out because apparently the people writing these like de dev version um, are, uh, are comedians. So this is what Yelp said. New in 5.4.3. <clears throat> there are three types of bugs that are now gone. Wow. Books marks re books, bookmarks related bugs, iOS 5 styling and layout bugs, and the, um, uh, what's the third one? Let's see. Bookmarks, <laughs> iOS <laughs> layout, the, um... and the, um, the third one we can't recall. <laughs> Oops. That's great. Isn't that funny? I read it and I was like, wait, are they actually doing this right now? Yeah, they're doing it. How many people read that, I wonder? Not very many. I think you're one of the few. I, I probably but am, but I appreciated it. We all know. I appreciated it. I like humor in my version updates. More of that, please. More of that. Devs. Keep up the good work. Yeah. By the way, I want to thank Ethan Barber 
Thanks, who is Ethan. the guy who told us about the App Store's new You Scroll Along uh, feature. Which Ethan is Barber um, is... is Huge. It, Does he con contact you a lot? Well, he writes in. He does He does yeah. videos for us pretty regularly. We can't always run them because sometimes they're uh, a little bit long or it's something that we've already showed off. But, Ethan, you're awesome. He found um, that. I'm really glad that and you're watching our show an and giving us so many tips. That's of an update I wouldn't have noticed. By the way, it's, it's, a, it's continuous, so you can keep going forever. I don't... Oh, that's great. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even think I would have noticed that. I wouldn't I would have. have thought that it should be like that from the very well, beginning. Well, it should have been because it is, I think it's you on know, the... You it's actually uh, something that the fire doesn't do well is swiping. You know, you've got to do that back button. All right, fire's out. <laughs> Put out that fire. I think it does perfectly. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you mean like the cover flow thing? Yeah, so let's say you're... Yeah, you... No, no, no. The cover flow is fine, but go, go into it. Go into something. Go into something? Like a book? Yeah. Oh, well, you mean turning? That's in your you mean the page flow. turn? Yeah. Well, we'll open up an app. There yeah, you go. Yeah. I know. How do you get back? How do you get back? Well, yeah. you're not used to Android. Android always has a back button. See this back button? But but, okay. I understand how it works. Or or you press the home button. But wouldn't it be nice to have some sort of a swipe where you can go back to the oh. front page? Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Well, that's your very iPad-y. and I think that's I one so. thing that changes people uh, from iOS to uh, Android. One of the big differences between iOS and Android is that Android's always had a back button. It's actually one of the things I miss on iOS. So you can, and some people really complain about it. I know MG complains about it, but because they say, well, I don't know what's going to happen when I press the back button. Well, you go to the previous thing. But it, I love that. You can always go back. You can always go back, 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 back. <sighs> oh, well, choice is good. I yeah. don't know why I'm doing air quotes. Choice is good. It, you don't need air quotes. It is good. <laughs> it just is. There's no like implied Nothing. subtext when no, I said choice. No, it's not good. <laughs> it's good. Choice is good. Winky, winky. I asked Steve Martin if he invented that. Somebody said, because in The Jerk, I think he did that, yeah. that he invented the he air quotes. He didn't invent no, no. that. No, he said that. He Abraham said, Lincoln did. exactly how he said that. He said, I didn't invent that. Abraham Lincoln did. Yeah. In one of his speeches. Four score. You know what's eight. actually pretty cool? What? Sling box. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, there you go. And that's the call to run the <laughs> Sling box commercial we've all been waiting for. Well, you know, if, if I didn't, nobody else would. I wouldn't do it. I'd... I think we went to the Sling box site. It plays yeah. music. <laughs> Slingbox.com slash twit. Slingbox, I don't have to tell you what it is. It's great. You hook it up to your television system. You put your DVR, your DVD player, your satellite or cable box into it, and you connect it to the Internet, and now it's taking that whole TV system and putting it on the Internet. It's like an AV receiver connected to the inter Internet that gives you access wherever you go to your television system. No additional fees, just the sling box. Now, it works on PCs, Macs, but here's the cool thing. It also works on the iPad. And it makes, turns the iPad into a portable uh, television device, which I really, really like. Your iPad already is great for watching tunes and TV, but now you can watch your live TV, your sports and all that stuff, wherever you go, even if it's just down the hall or around the world. Now, here's the deal. Go to slingbox.com slash tweet. You'll find out where you can get a slingbox. They're available also on Amazon. Best Buy has them. But the best place to start, slingbox.com slash twit. It is very, very cool. And by the way, the quality is good. We used, I don't know if we're going to use it this year, but in years past for CES, we would hook up a slingbox in, in Vegas mm -hmm. and the, and the uh, endpoint, the sling catcher here. And that's how we would, that was our satellite uplink. We'd use the internet connection and slingbox made it look fantastic. You wouldn't think that that would work, but it does. You wouldn't think, but it does. I mean, who wants to pack up their whole living room when they go away for business right. just so they can watch all their favorite stuff in their hotel well, room? Yeah, we got some big that games takes coming a up. big bag. This is exciting. We're coming to the end of the football. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to miss a thing. Slingbox. You know, the Niners are having a pretty good season. Just saying. Ugh, just did saying. I say they wouldn't? I'm a big fan. Are you? You bet. Yeah. Niners! You're probably a Patriots fan. Uh, you know, I did like the Patriots because I grew up in Rhode Island, but, but I've been a Niners fan since I moved here. Oh, that's good. And so they're, what, they're eight and one this year. It's very exciting. They, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's happening, but it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep the momentum, <laughs> it was dudes. Unexpected. Keep the momentum. Actually, if you, Liz, you would get me my app cap, if you know what I mean. <laughs> 
I'll show you what a Niners fan <laughs> I am. Wow, that was a double entendre if I've ever heard one. Let's get to some viewer feedback. We got Shall an email we? from Tyler who says, before the release of iCloud, a question was raised about purchases that you may not want everybody who uses the account to see, you know, or sexy pictures or whatever, and it's all getting synced. Not sure if this qualifies as a duh tip or not. He didn't actually say anything about sexy pictures. That was just me. I have that's, sexy that's pictures. That's where my My photo stream is loaded with Mine too, and I mean, sexy, how embarrassing this could, this could be. Yeah. You can hide purchase books, iTunes content, and apps from the purchase section in iBooks or iTunes or the App Store just by swiping left and pressing hide. It'll display a message saying that the hidden items can be shown again on oh. the account information page, either in iTunes, on your PC, or on your Mac, oh. or from account settings on the device, each item needs to be hidden at one time, so that's a problem if you have whole albums or TV series that you don't want to be showing up, but it's better than having no control at all. So let's go into our settings area, or actually not in our settings area, I'm going to go into my iTunes, let's just say. I don't have too yeah, much Yeah, show music me how to do here. this, because I'm, this is surprising I'm going to, to and then I'm going to show you how to Dougie. I'm just kidding, I'm not going to. <laughs> Show uh, me how to Dougie. So show me how to Dougie. Let's say that this uh, this this gold mine song is this is actually not anything I'm I'm weirded out about at all. But let's just say for whatever reason you hated the song. I had promised you I would never download it. Dougie. What do I do? No, this song gold mine. This is oh. I don't have very much stuff in my you iTunes. Sure don't. Wow. Yeah, because I I have a different account that I put all my music on. Okay, so let's say I want to hide the song. Okay. Oh, that's neat. Right. So you can unhide purchases at any time from your account information page. Okay, thank you very much. Now you'll never know that the worst song in the world is on my iPad. I don't know if it's a bad song or not. It's just, you know. Well, my, my kids, for instance, have a lot of rap music that I don't I really don't want to see in my cloud, so I could just hide all of that, all yeah. that stuff. You could hide it. Or like if you had a TV show that was sort of R-rated or something and right. you didn't want it. Right, I can hide it from them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's good. I don't Look, know, I hid my whole iTunes. It's almost better than a duh tip, Tyler. The whole iTunes hid. That's not. You shouldn't have done that. No. It's all have. gone now. You are. What's wrong with your iTunes? That's, you didn't actually hide it. It's just not loading. No. You've had 5.0.1 problems. Now I upgraded uh, earlier in the week, and I was a little bit worried because of what you said, and I've had no problems at all. It's so just you me. have some sort of a zombie pad. It's not just my pad. It's on my phone too. Has been all sorts of. What weird is things. the? You have a. Well, 501 has it out and for you, I, I don't get it. We don't get along. 501. 501. Not your size. Another email from Ryan from St. John's, Newfoundland. Actually, we got a very similar email from Mike as well. Sarah and Leo, I just checked the size of my mobile applications folder in iTunes. And it's huge. And it's taking up almost 20 gigabytes of space on my Mac. Yeah. Is there any justifiable reason to keep all these files since I can easily download them again at any time because of iCloud? Now, I was thinking about this, and uh, John and, or sorry, Ryan and Mike, same problem. I've got about 20 gigabytes on my MacBook of apps that I never, ever, ever need to access on my MacBook. I only need to access on my iPad. And Delete some on them. my iPhone. Delete them. But here's, so would, okay, so if you're in settings and you go into iCloud and you've got storage and backup enabled. Don't worry about iCloud that. iCloud backup, wouldn't they just reappear again spontaneously? Oh, I see what you're saying. You have to turn down, turn off the auto download of apps. Yeah. Which you can turn off in iTunes. Yeah. So that way it won't download back to your iTunes. I actually do that anyway because my phone and my iPad are two you different don't want, accounts. You don't want all confusing. those apps. Yeah. Um, no, actually, do delete them. Absolutely. The only issue would be if uh, you suddenly wanted all of them back. That might use up your bandwidth. Uh, you know, especially if you only have like 30 or 25 gigabytes on your uh, 3G bandwidth, you'd want to do it on a Wi-Fi situation. But I think, no, I think that's the beauty of iCloud. We no longer have to put all our music or apps or anything on our portable devices. We can get them as needed, and that saves a lot of space. I think that's a great idea, and certainly you don't need it on your desktop at all. I don't know how much space you're using up, um, Is but it, uh, I, I mean, it's, he, I didn't, hadn't even really thought about they're it surprisingly until big. I checked. They're surprisingly big. Let me just click. If you go to the general settings and usage, uh, you can see how much space is being used. Uh, uh, this is a 64 gigabyte uh, iPad. I've used 45 gigabytes, and it's actually going to take a while for it to figure out what I've used. So there's, there's a lot of stuff on here. You're absolutely right. You know, one of the things that's on here, 
um, is stored data for GPS programs, cached maps, things like that. That might surprise you how much that can be, uh -huh. gigabytes and gigabytes. Very so true. If you're running out of room, you might want to consider clearing those out. Absolutely. I had to actually uh, delete a bunch of um, podcasts I've got recently. 19 gigs of music, 7 gigs of You don't think about video. audio podcasting taking up so much space, but yeah. I had uh, quite a few gigs that I was able to clear off. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Finally, we have a video. Um, we're going to play the video first, and you're going to be like, what the heck? And then I'll explain um, it in human terms. Okay. <laughs> Let's watch. Okay. Oh, my God. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Leo. Love your show. This is Super Squirrel, brought to you by Morpho, the once great app prior to iOS 5.0. The developer has not responded to any of the complaints of the application no longer working properly. Please advise. <laughs> So what you just I saw think just showing good taste. was Brian. Um, That's from Morpho. <laughs> from Raleigh, Durham, uh, North Carolina. He made a video question to us with right. Morpho, but he actually has an issue with Morpho because um, he says, uh, once you update to iOS 5.0, the app no longer allows the user to create new faces from your camera or library. Well, that's no good. I tried to get a hold of the developer. I haven't uh, received a reply. Hey, the app was only 199 but I feel that there's an F ethical obligation for developers to acknowledge compatibility issues with their product and iOS versions. What do you guys think of like a buyer beware segment type of a thing? <laughs> he suggested apps of shame there'd of be, the week. There'd be too many. There'd be too many because that's just not the way it works with Apple. It's not, right. I mean, they would have to be having a personal conversation with all of their developers and that just won't happen. Yeah. Developers have to catch up. Uh, I, I do think I saw somewhere a stat page about the number of apps that have been abandoned uh, on the iOS platform, and it's hundreds of thousands. So uh, maybe not hundreds, tens of thousands anyway. So uh, that's the problem is that, you know, developers are like anybody else. They, get, they go to college, they get out of college, uh, they get a life, they get mm -hmm. a girlfriend, whatever, and then they just don't have time to do the app. And unfortunately, um, that's, that's just the way it is. You can't force somebody to update their app. It'd be great for us to put out a warning, warning these apps don't work, but there's just thousands, tens of thousands And of it them. would be sort of a depressing segment, I think. Apps that <laughs> dead apps. Apps that need to be updated but aren't. It is just... And then what will happen is then they'll, the developer will see the show and then they'll update and we'll look <sighs> foolish we'll look and mean. Yeah. And we don't want any of that. The but application graveyard. Brian, I really appreciated you sending your question in the form of a chipmunk squirrel. or squirrel. Squirrel. Sorry. Squirrel. I, I don't want to get that mixed up. No, um, no, no, you don't. But I wish we had a better answer for you, but I think it's just... One of those things where if you've if you've contacted the developer, you've done all you can, and uh, maybe other people who are watching the show have had the same problem. Mm -hmm. You guys can gang up on the dev and get what you want, or otherwise, you probably can find an app that does something somewhere. Oh, all right. I don't think so. Before we <laughs> <laughs> come on, I think that's a one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Leo. Hi, sir. I thought I I got a kick out of that this morning. I, I found that too. this morning in our in our inbox. Speaking right. of inboxes, if you want to write us, you got a question, you got a comment, you have an idea, you have a da tip, anything. iPad today at twit.tv is how you get a hold of us. You can also leave us a voicemail. We didn't get any voicemails this week, which is very unusual. Usually we have a lot. So let me tell you the what number the again. What the heck is the story? 757-504-IPAD. 757-504-4723. Are there any parameters or things people should consider before doing that? Before calling? Like how long it should be, the yeah, content? 30 seconds or less is kind of the magic number. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, that applies to videos too. We love getting your videos. Sometimes your videos are awesome, but they're like two minutes. Right. So it doesn't quite work within the context of the show. Try to keep that to 30 seconds or less. Um, I've had a couple of people who have written in after sending a voicemail to say, maybe you like it in this form better, and actually that can be helpful because then we can sort of paraphrase. Uh, just get a hold of us, however you can. We love to get your uh, comments, your suggestions. You help us make a better show. You do indeed. Uh, let me uh, talk briefly about Audible.com, and then it's time for your app cap, young That's lady. Right. I have my app cap to show where my bread is buttered. Oh. Uh, you know, Audible is a great place uh, for you to get audiobooks. Now 100,000 titles across all kinds of literature, fiction, nonfiction, thrillers, science fiction, uh, technology, self-help, kids and young adults. In fact, there's a great selection of young adult fiction on Audible. I want you to go to audible.com. See the Steve uh, Jobs book is there. That's how I listen to it. You know, I would never have been able to get through that 38-hour book 
if I didn't get it on Audible because uh, I just don't have time to read anymore. And when I get in bed, my one time to read, I fall asleep after three pages. It would have taken me uh, years to finish that book. But I put it, uh, I got it from Audible, put it on my iPad, and then I was able to listen in the car, at the gym, uh, doing uh, the laundry, whenever I had some time, not to hold a book, but, but merely to, uh, to, to listen to a book. Of course, I still listen to podcasts and music, but Audible has really expanded the, 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 the amazing stuff I can listen to. I want you to try it right now for free for one month, audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's Oh, this is the new Stephen King. I want to get that. 11 63 a novel. I'm really excited about that. Now, you could buy it for seven forty nine, or you can go to that URL, audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today, and get it absolutely free. Um, in fact, what you'll be signing up for, that's 30 hours for free. You'll be signing up for the uh, gold account. Uh, that's a book a month. First month's free. The book is yours to keep forever. Cancel at any time. I uh, can't wait to read. I love Stephen King. For a long time, Audible didn't have any Stephen King. Now it has everything, including all the stuff he wrote under pseudonyms. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. It works, of course, on all computers, of your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phones, your GPS devices, your Kindle. It works on the Kindle Fire. I have the Audible app on here. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that my whole Audible library, makes it really, really easy to they listen. They do. Well, they're an Amazon company. That whole library, and I, I do this on the iPhone as well, is there, and I can just pick whatever uh, book from the... I've Because I've been a member for more than 10 years, 500-plus books on there, and I can read one at any time that, I, that I've read. I just love it. Audible podcast.com slash iPad today. Please. You know what, uh, you know, audiobook I'm going to listen to next. Do you listen to audiobooks? Uh, I, I do. I I've started to more and more. Well, sometimes. you have a long commute. Well, I have a long commute, um, although I'm dedicating most of that to my French podcast, but when I'm cooking and I know it's like, I'm going to sort of be on my feet for the next Perfect hour. For Perfect for and that. I kind of just, it's like, I was just sort of, it's like I need something to think about because I'm not really right. thinking about what I'm doing. I'm mechanical right. or at the gym. But uh, Audible now has Gabby, A Story of, of Courage and Hope, which is about Gabrielle Giffords, oh. which is narrated by her husband, oh, Mark I'd Kelly. Oh, I'd love to hear that. But the last chapter, she narrates herself, oh my God. which is amazing because she's had such a hard time getting her speech back. Wow. It's really, I, I, there was an interview on NPR, so oh, I was I like, oh my gosh, wait. I really need to get off That's of this book. That's an example where an audio book is going to be unique. That's actually, to, to me, more powerful. Absolutely. Because that she's actually participating wow, physically. That's really neat. Yeah, really cool. So, love Audible. Okay, should we talk about some app caps? Yeah, where's I'm my very cap? Excited. I have a special cap to show. Give me a cap. I am a, you want a cap? Yeah. I want a cap. Look carefully. I think you should look like you come from Switzerland. Oh. Austria. You know, the, um, I do too. An I Austrian, sure an Austrian right. brought me that. This actually kind of matches me. It it's is like you. I planned this. Not, it's like I planned it. See, I have. Remember, you, you, I have taste. <laughs> it's hard to take you seriously. You may not know it, looking at me. Yeah. But I am tasty. Okay. Yeah. It reminds me of that that LMFAO song. Girl, look at that body. I work out. I'm sexy and I know it. Do 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 do. I don't think you know that song. No. I don't, but That's I think it could be my anthem. It should be. It should be your anthem. My theme song. So this is an app that I've been playing around for a while because Trey Ratcliffe is a friend of mine and he likes to give me little teasers of what he's working on next. But now it's uh, it's it's live and it's called Stuck on Earth. He has a new, a new app. He won't stop. He's weird. He is amazing. He, Trey Ratcliffe, we love you. This app is... Look at that. Um, what's interesting about Trey, and if you're not familiar with him, he is an amazing photographer. He specializes in HDR photography. There's a very good chance you've seen some of his work and not even known it. On my uh, wall. Because, yeah, he has very successful business and licenses out photos uh, yeah. and spends a lot of time traveling. And he was telling me that... I mean, half of his job is actually traveling and seeing new places and, and doing research in order what to a photograph. What job that would be. Best job in the world. Well, this is job. the best job in the world. He has the second best job in the world. But he, he decided to build an app that was more of a hybrid between photography and travel rather than just pretty photography. And that's what Stuck on Earth is. Um, it's, it's kind of a play on his website, Stuck in Custom. Exactly. Yeah, it's, that's where it came from. Um, it knows who I am because I've, I've put in my... Um, name. When you fir when you first sign up for Stuck on for. Earth, name. yeah, that's my that's my name, <laughs> my nom. Nom. Oh, <laughs> you're learning the French. Yeah. Je m'appelle Sarah. Yeah. Oui. 
I don't say it like that, though. It's je m'appelle Sarah. Sarah. You know, they love it in France when you talk like that. Oh, they love it. They Nothing do. they love more. They what, what's ne neat about uh, Stuck on Earth is that it wants to get to know what kind of a traveler you are. Okay, what, so for, you're, a, you're an adventurous. I am kind of an adventurous yeah. person, but, but that's something that they ask you when you first sign up for the service. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Barcelona area because I'm actually going to be going there soon. Right so, after we do Le Web in th Paris. That's you're right. Go, UNMG going down. We're that's taking so an overnight train oh, down to Barcelona. Train. 12 hours. <sighs> that's so much fun. Yeah, it's going to be really wow. fun. I actually don't think it's going to be a very luxurious train, but that's the adventure. It matter. That's the adventure. Yeah, yeah it'll be good stuff. So I'm in the Barcelona area, and what I can do is just start clicking on stuff to see some interesting images that are geolocated in this area. La Sagrada Familia. Wonderful. Can't, can't wait. Now, this is a combination of uh, pictures that Trey has taken, mm. Flickr photos that are tagged appropriately oh, so that he can pull in. So it doesn't just have to be his so stuff. So it's not just his stuff. No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's, the, it's the photography community in this particular area. Uh -huh. Now, if I just want to keep scrolling through the area, that's, getting that's pictures. Gaudi's amazing cathedral. Exactly. This is, so this is all views, actual views that are taken uh, in a place that I'm about to go to. That's, that's a got Bartho a little strange. Barcelona Panda Parade. Yeah, it was some it was sort of photo shoot they do that. You know, the there's area. the running of the bulls in Pompolona. There they got the <laughs> running of the pandas. It's incredible. <laughs> it's good yeah. stuff. Yep. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's something that I'm actually looking at specifically because I'm, I'm going there. I can uh, save a trip. Adventure in France is something that um, I actually saved because we're going to be going to France lately. He has so a like, video about how he took that picture that's great. Isn't that neat? I mean, yeah. some, of, some of his photos, you're like, mm -hmm. how the heck did you do that? It's very inspiring. I'm not necessarily going to get that that beautiful shot because I don't have the, like a slow shutter type stood, thing. He risked his life to get that shot. He stood in the middle of the street. Well, I'm glad that. he did. So I don't have to. But uh, you, you get the idea. Wow, it is, beautiful. it's a mixture of really beautiful photos, uh, trip planning and figuring out where in the world these neat things are. Or you can just, you don't have to be like, I'm taking a trip. Now let's look at pictures. You can just start exploring. I you can actually a, explore the world. I bought a new lens for our trip to Paris. I'm Did you? Excited. Yeah, really nice camera lens. I take lots of good pictures. Awesome. I can't wait. So that's called Stuck, Stuck on Earth. Stuck on Earth. It is free. Free? Trey. Zero dollars. Trey, 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 Trey. Isn't he great? Yeah, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really into this app. I think he did a nice job. Wow. Um, it, you know, for nothing else, just kind of a time waster. Go daydream for a little while. See, what, uh, see what's going on in Mongolia. Are you going to take the Orient Express from Paris to Istanbul? No, it's Paris to Barcelona. Yeah, it's, that's they not the Orient Express. That's not the Orient Express? No, no it's, uh, it's called like Tren Hotel. Um, it's some Spanish company that runs That'd it. That'd be great. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, you get to have dinner time. on the train. Yeah, and a wonderful time. A bar. Do you need a bodyguard? <laughs> There's only I'll two beds in our little, <laughs> our, in our berth. In your Sorry. Cubicle. No, you're going to have so, to get your own room. I wanted to stick with the game theme on this one. And the reason I'm wearing this is because, as we know, chess is a very physical sport. Oh, yeah. I, uh, and I'm concussions are common. Common. People banging their head on the board. Yeah. I, um, I uh, love chess. Serious chess player in my ute. Uh, and uh, it's amazing how far we've come with computer chess playing games. I've looked at them all. This is the best, the strongest on the iPad. It actually just came out on the iPad. It was on the iPhone for a long time. It's called Shredder, and I highly recommend it. Uh, it is expensive. It's eight dollars. Um, Why? But, Why is it eight dollars? Well, because a good chess engine is expensive, and this uh, is a commercial uh, chess engine that is quite, quite good. You can set the strength so you don't have to play against a grandmaster. In fact, here I've got it set to a 1400, which is kind of a duffer club level. But you can turn it up, um, uh, and uh, it's very easy. You see, the nice thing about the iPad is a really good-looking interface. This would be a great way to learn how to play chess for some people because it's... Uh, it's um, you're really a chess fanatic, oh, aren't you? Oh, I'm serious about this game. You I are. I love chess. I love playing it, and uh, and I think this is this is quite a nice, uh, nicely done, uh, nicely implemented chess game. So, uh, Shredder, if you want the strongest, by the way, you can see the analysis going on here. Um, you can. Uh, there's lots of things uh, to do here. That, you know that uh, will help you, including analysis. You can set up a position and watch. The computer analyzes the situation that's the position and, and see what it will do. Now you see, I have the playing strength set kind of towards the low end. If I turn it all the way up, we're going. They claim a, a, an ELO rating of 2,600. That's the that's a grand master player. And in my experience, it is a very strong game. You can even set how it plays, whether it's aggressive, more human, more machine-like. 
Uh, lots of settings on this. <laughs> they it, have a Bobby Fischer setting. They That'd do. That'd be awesome. They do. You could, in effect, you could the game play. Game just starts get to get it, difficult. Get it to and play late. like Bobby Fischer. You can <laughs> flip the board if you want. If you decide that they're they're playing too well, um, they also have some chess puzzles built in. This is the best way to get better at chess: is to learn uh, chess puzzles. Uh, find the best move. Oh, for see one. that I like. I yeah. really like that. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll never get better just playing games over and over. Well, I guess I would. But this it, it allows you to think about it in a little bit of a different way. Right. This is actually fairly easy. But uh, still, uh, I think this is, a, this is a lot of fun. Um, again, Shredder, uh, if, you, if you play it for a while, it will show how you've done and will show your improving score. Or if you're not good, it will show your <laughs> get un, worse unimproving and worse. Uh, score. <laughs> you're forgetting how to play. The, 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 seven ninety nine for a game, a chess game of this quality is actually a very good deal. It is not an expensive game. A good way to get better, a good way to play when you've got some spare time. And the iPad is really an ideal platform uh, for playing chess, I think. I think it's just really, I mean, that's very easy to uh, read, very legible, uh, really nicely done. That's well, Shredder. Shredder Chess for iPad. This is not, now somebody asks, can you play chess with friends? This is not... This is you against the computer. Mm -hmm. I agree. Chess with friends is wonderful. Uh, that's a ch that's where you're playing real humans, and of course you'll get better games, I think, than the, even the computer games. But this is a good one if you don't have a human or you're not online. Uh, or you want to spend some time getting good, so the next time you play your friend, you right. have thought about it from all angles Abs and really go absolutely in swinging. Absolutely right, because it, it's humiliating uh, to lose. That's uh, why I don't play yeah. because I'm really bad. So well, this has been quite a packed show. We've got games, mm -hmm. pirates. Zombies and Robo uh, Apocalyptic Worlds have been yes. represented. Leo, Leo's hat has been involved in the show. Miners! A chess game, photography apps, and a lot more. Yeah. This was fun, Leo. A lot of fun, and I thank you all for being here. And I hope you will join us. We do the show every Thursday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern Time. Uh, that's tw uh, 2130 UTC if you're uh, outside the U.S. Uh, and so come in, watch us live. As, as Sarah said, we'd love to see in the chat room, but you can always get a copy of it. Audio or video. Video's better. You can watch Sarah dance. She's Wait, naked right now. I'm doing now. the sprinkler. Uh, I just don't know how to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> iPad today is at twit.tv slash IPT. IPT. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time on iPad today. Oh!